Hi, this is Katrina Cross from Woodrow Handcrafts and in today's tutorial we're working with our Digitizer MBX version 5 software and we're going to create a quilting block. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've put, brought in our artwork into our hoop and the first step of what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the toolbar and we're going to open the digitize toolbox. We're going to select circle. We would like to set, check that we've got a fill selected and we're going to check we've got satin stitch and we're going to turn our auto split off. Okay. And we're going to zoom in on our image and we're going to create the circle in the center here to start with. So we're just dragging that out with the mouse like so and then enter twice on our keyboard. So we've got our first little bit started. Now we're going to come over here to digitize close shape. With the digitize close shape we're going to check that we've got a fill selected that we've got satin stitch selected and we've got our auto split off. And we're just going to create this teardrop through here now. So using our right and left clicks on the mouse, we're going to create our teardrop. And all the way back out to our starting point and enter on our keyboard. So you can see now that we've created this teardrop. So the next step is we're going to select it in our resequencing tool over on the right hand side and we're going to select stitching out of our object properties. We're going to scroll down until we find our stitch angle and we're going to change that to 45 degrees and enter. So now you can see on our stitches they've changed the angle now. Okay. So the next step is we would like to check where our stitches finish and start. So we're happy with where it is there. Yep. Um, through here. It's a bit boldy, so we're just going to adjust that a bit until we're happy with it. Yep, so pretty happy with that. So while we've got it now selected in our object, um, sorry, our resequencing tool, so we've got our little boxes around it, so it says that it's selected, we're going to minimize the digitized toolbox. And we're going to open out the layout one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here to where it says mirror, copy both, and we're going to click on that. And you'll see on the screen now it comes up with the outline of um, the stitches that you've just made and where you're going to copy and paste them. So move it around until it sits over the other long teardrops like so. Once you've got them in position, left click on the mouse. So you can see up here that I'm not quite happy with that one, so we're going to go and edit that one. So click off, and that will be our second one. Yep. Come up here to reshape. There we go. I'm going to go around and check our other ones, and they all look pretty good. Okay. 
So the next step what we're going to do now is we're going to create our candle wicking stitch. We want to create it on this curve that we've got here. Okay. So we're going to start out here, we're going to work down and back out again. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to minimize our layout again and open out our digitizer toolbox. We're now going to go down to digitize open line and then in our object properties we're going to select motive and then you'll see in our mo if we scroll down here in our motives we've got different categories and it's got black work. If you click that out you'll see candle wicking. So we're going to select the candle wicking and we're going to change our pattern choice to a half knot. Then we're going to zoom in nice and close. Start on our curve and work our way around. When we get up here, we're going to use our left click to create the point and continue back around with our right click of the mouse, creating our curve until we reach the end. Once we've reached the end, we're going to press enter. And that's created our decorative candle wick stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here now and we're going to select that stitch that we just created in our resequencing tool. We're going to go over to our toolbox and we're going to minimize the digitize and open out the layout. So while we've got it selected we're now going to come down to mirror copy horizontal. So when you click on that, you'll see that it brings out an outline of where you'd like to put, copy that pattern to. So once you've got it in place, just click with your mouse. So you can see now that we've got the digitized, the candle wicking stitch on both sides of the pattern. So the next step now is while well, we've got it selected over here in our resequencing tool, we're going to select duplicate and then we're going to rotate 90 degrees. So we're going to use this key up here now. So we're going to type in 90 and enter. So now you should have the four of them up on your image. So you should have so you should have the four candle wicking ones. So what you can do now is just go through and check that they're all lined up, that you're happy with how they're lined up. So you can move them a little bit if you're ha not happy with the alignment. Okay, so the next step is we're going to create this aspect of the design up here. So we're going to go over and we're going to minimize our layout toolbox. We're going to open out our digitize toolbox and we're going to select digitize close shape. We're then going to go up and check that we've got our fill selected. And we've got satin stitch selected with our auto split turned off. And we're just going to start at the base here and we're going to create another teardrop. Once you get back to the beginning, enter on your keyboard. 
we can then select it in our resequencing tool, select reshape and make any adjustments if you feel that you just want to edit anything. So when you're happy with it, the next step on what we would like to do is we're going to move our finishing cross. So you can see here while we've got our reshape selected that the little diamond, the green diamond is where the stitches start off. So that's where the first stitch of the underlay will start. And the little cross is what represents the last stitch of the design. So we want to move that one. So we're just going to pick it up, hold down our left click with our mouse and drag it down to the bottom here. So the reason we have placed it down here is that when we start to create our next part of our pattern through here, it will create a continuous flow. So it will go through and it will stitch all this out and then it will automatically start this one. So you're not getting jump stitches throughout your design. So we're going to go over to our digitize toolbox and we're going to select digitize close shape again. Check that you've got your fill selected. Check that you've got your satin selected. And this time we're going to start in the middle. And we're just going to work our way around. Out to the point, and we're just going to create a curve back again, like so. Okay, so we're now going to select that in our resequencing tool, select our reshaping tool. And we're just going to check that we've got it how we want our pattern. So I don't like that node there. So I just clicked on it and then if you press delete on your keyboard, that will then get rid of it. Okay. So you can see here also, while we've got it in our reshape selected, we've want to move our finishing point. So you can see the finishing point is right out there at the end. We want to move it back in so that when it starts to stitch it's going to start on the next part. It will start and continue around. Okay. So now that we've created that part, we want to make sure we've got it selected over here in our resequence. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to copy and paste. And then we're going to press mirror X. So once we've created that second part, we're just going to use the keys on our keyboard and slowly use our arrow to bring it over into place. Like so. So now what we're going to do is we're going to press the D key on our keyboard and that's going to hide our, design, our artwork. So all you can see in front of you is the design that you've created. So you can see here that I want to bring that over a little bit so we're just going to do some fine tuning to where we've got it, where we want it, like so. Just move that up a bit, move them up. Like so. Okay. 
Okay. So what we're going to do now is in our resequencing tool on the right hand side, we're going to select those three parts of that design that we've just created. So we're going to hold down our control key on our keyboard and select those last three pattern pieces. So once we've done that, you can let go of your control. We're then going to go over here and minimize our digitize toolbox. Open out our layout toolbox again. And we're going to mirror copy vertical. So you can see there that the line comes up. And we're just going to bring it down. So just scroll out. So about there. And enter. So while we've still got that selected, we're now going to press duplicate. So that will copy all those six pieces now and we're going to rotate 90 degrees there we go so you can go through and check now that you've got all the pieces in the position that you want so you can just go through Like so. Come up here, let's pull him out a bit. <laughs> Bring that down. Like so. On to the next one, so zoom out, zoom back in. Move him down a bit. Like so. Yep. Okay, so while we've got the image turned off and our design aspect up here on the screen, we're going to go over in our resequencing tool and we're going to select all four of our candle wicking parts. So once we've got all four of the candle wicking selected, we're going to change the color. So down on the keyboard down here, we're going to select sky and change it to a blue. We also want to select the circle in the centre and change it to that colour too. So you can see on the keyboard, um, sorry, on the colour pad down the bottom here, on the threads, that colour that we've now chosen, there's a little blue box next to it and there's a box in the red one as well. So that indicates the colours that we actually use in the pattern. So if you want to change colours and you want to keep it consistent, you can't remember which colour you had, you can now check by seeing which little blue box um, appears in the colour chart. We're now going to go through and we're going to select the other aspects of this design. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our resequencing tool. We're going to change it to where it says colours up the top there as opposed to objects. So you can now see that there's two sets of blue and two sets of red. So we're going to select the red and we're going to change it to navy blue. Like so. And the other part to navy blue. like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on this part of the design. 
we're going to come back over here and we're going to change our resequence back to objects so we can keep an eye on what we're doing. We're going to come over to our toolbox and we're going to open up digitize and digitize open line. We're going to check now that we've got our motif select section selected and we're going to come down to check that we've got candle wicking selected and with our pattern this time we're going to change it to a colonial 4.5 we're now going to create one little knot up here so you just need to create a tiny little line and then press enter and that will create one and then we're going to come in here and create another one over this little line here and enter. And we're just going to keep working around our pattern until we've got them all. Okay, so that one there can be moved in a bit. So we've just selected it in our resequence. And just drag it into place. Okay, zoom out, zoom back in. Select our line again. Create our line. Put our knot in. Create a line. Put our next knot in. like so. So once you've got all our little knots in we need to change the colour on those. So we're going to come over here in our resequence, select colours again, select the red and we're going to change it to blue. So for example now we want to go, oh okay we want to change it to that same light blue pattern that we used before you can actually see in your thread count down here that the little blue box is on number 20 so we're going to click on that one and then that will change it so that the colors are all the same so we're just going to turn our image back on we're going to select digitize open line with a triple run line and in gray so we're going to come in here and we're going to create a line through there and another one through here like so and then on the other side as well until you've got four in. Okay. So now that we've got those four in we can turn our image back off and we can see them. So this one here I need to adjust the curve in. There we go. Um, we're going to select reshape and change that to a circle node and just give it a bit of a curve okay so now what we need to do is we've got to select the four so we're going to hold down our control and select all four in our resequence so once we've got all four selected, we're going to minimize, digitize, open out layer. We're going to we? mirror vertical again to bring it down the bottom. 
like that. So while we've still got the four selected, we're going to duplicate and rotate 90 degrees. Like so. Okay, so now just zoom in and check that you've got them all where you want them and you're happy with them. So we're pretty happy with every, where everything is on here in our design. So the last step we're going to do is we're going to come up to edit. We're going to select all. So you can now see that um, all our pattern is selected. And we're going to rotate 45 degrees. There we go. So now it's made it into a block. So we can go ahead now and we can save that image. Sorry, save that design. So save design as. Leave it in our EMB file type because then we can come back and edit it later. So you can add stuff to it or take stuff away. And we're going to name it Quilt Block 1 and save. So if we just turn our um, artwork back on, you can see here that I've kept some of the parts of the artwork, but I haven't included everything. And that's the beauty of creating your own designs is it gives you that ability to keep stuff and take stuff away and add stuff in and just really create a individual personal design for yourself. So thanks for tuning into today's tutorial and we look forward to teaching another one next month. If you're interested in any of our other tutorials, don't hesitate in checking out our website at www.woodrowhandcrafts.com. Thank you.